Now we're going to do some of these rocks. Um, got my, what was this colour again? This one was burnt umber, that's right, because I wanted the raw sienna, uh, raw umber. But I have to go with what I've got, which is, of course, the raw uh, burnt umber. It's not quite as dark as the uh, as the raw umber. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit of black there so that I can get that darker look. In the last little video, we finished off doing a splatter. So we've got a little old scraggly tree line in the background. We've got sort of that light coloured sort of uh, dirt but it does come out of this beautiful red soil that we get in the outback just these beautiful oranges and in these certain ochres and uh, and obviously our rocks and what i want to do now is just mix up a little bit of this dark color and start to put some shadows in around these rocks so let's see how we do that oh, bit noisy wasn't i now i'm just going to grab a little bit of that black can you see that yep I'm going to grab a little bit of that black and mix it into that burnt umber. And as I've made the point quite a few times, I really wish this was raw umber. I wouldn't even need to put any of that black to it. But still, make do with what we've got. Always have a couple of napkins and a little bit of paper on hand. Clean your utensils. Great little um, plastic spatulas. They're only about $3 from one of your cheap shops. You usually get quite a, an array of um, little pellet knives and things like that. Now, just throw that off screen so it doesn't look ugly. I might just reorganise myself here a little. What I'm going to do here, so I'm going to, I'm going to just get a little bit of this. And remember, this is just going to be shadow. So we're just going to, I'll pick, I'll pick a certain sort of a, a rock and we just want to, Sort of just come around the edges of it. And, uh, you know, like this is. Doesn't matter if you make them look a little bit smaller. Really good way to be able to do these sorts of things in bulk as well. It'll just look like, when we're finished here, it'll just look like a whole little uh, mound of the odd stone. So look at this guy over here. Hopefully you can see that. Try to see if I can I can zero in a bit. Hang on. If I just put my fingers on there and bring that up, look at that. There we go. That's made it a bit bigger, isn't it? All right. So let's pick on this guy here. Let's just. All I'm going to do is I'm going to come each side of that stone, and I'm just going to just add a little bit of interest around the. Well, let's say shade. Let's get a bit of shade in around that. Just don't be afraid to come up around the side of the side of it. Let's there's a bit of a splatter there. We'll just put a bit of a bone there, a little bit of water, and uh, we'll come in here. We'll just make this. So uh, this is a whole splatter here. We're trying to make him into two rocks if we can. So I'll now I haven't used this brush before. And it's probably not the most ideal brush. Might have to go look that liner brush that I showed you earlier. Not wanting to play the game, is it? Just not. It's just not grabbing onto the paper as well as like beautiful point though. Look at that. And when you do want to get a line, I like to just twist the brush. Like I don't know. Is that coming? Can you see that? So if I was to come up the top here, a little bit rusty this morning, isn't it? But anyway, a bit bit uh, shaky in the hand. But when you when you're doing a line, you can just twist that twist that brush around. Probably not the best example there anyway. But so what I'm going to have to do is go really really wet, so it will come off the brush a bit easier for this example. So when I say really really wet, I'll bring the that in the screen because I've just really wet that brush down. Uh, sorry, that paint down. So it comes off the brush a lot easier. It looks like there's a bristle in there. So being new brushes too, they um, will not perform as well. 
as they would once they've been used for a little a little while. All right, let's get back to this. Like I said, I'm going to make two rocks out of this guy. This little these couple here. So get in there. Get in here. We'll just cut that one down a little bit. And we'll just see that just now it just looks like a couple of rocks, a couple of random rocks in there in amongst that that area. Again, we'll get in there, coming over here. And you really want to embrace these odd shapes because let's face it, I mean not every rock is a perfect little round circle or, or sphere. Now I do ramble on a lot, I know that. I'm just picking up a little bit more of that paint. Here's another little example, good example here. So hopefully you can see this. I'm just gonna start off with a bit of shade on the bottom. A little, and just try to get him in there. A little bit of paint in there. Look at that, this is starting to take shape. It's starting to look like actual rocks. That kind of looks like a, a spin effect. So I'll leave that one and I'll come over to these guys here, get a bit of shadow in there and a bit of, see if I can't just, just take that point off the top of that guy a little. See, now I've gone a bit hard. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna leave that. Might be a bit of shadow behind it for all we know. Good thing about this is, is you know, it can be as random as you like. I might just bring that paint in a little bit. So you can see what I'm doing. I'll take that big guy off there. Don't need him in the shot. Alright, so I don't know. Where's the tape coming through? I've almost lost where my tape line is. Probably about here, so I'll just uh, I'll just randomly for the sh for the sake of showing you what I here's another big dot over here. We'll just come in around the edges there. It doesn't have to make sense. In fact, in nature, I found, and I've said this before, I found if you can do odds with nature, let's say three birds or five birds as opposed to four and six birds or on a wire or whatever you might be painting, if you go that odd number, it, for some reason, don't ask me why, but it just seems to make more sense to the eye because we're used to having that randomness of looking at that random, um, that random display, I guess, in our mind. I'm gonna make another two rocks out of this one. So I probably um, could even go into the into the background more with a few more few of these uh, darker. But don't forget, I am going to try and get a tree in here somewhere. I don't know how that's going to turn out because I haven't really got an idea. I've been trying to while I've been painting is trying to work out what sort of tree I'm going to put there. I love these little um, I think they're called jiggly trees or something like that. They get out here and they're a fantastic looking little tree. They just go all over the place with their limbs and uh, they're just so random, but they look, they just look so awesome. And I don't want to get too, too bogged down with this because I don't want to um, have too much dark. So, you know, I could even go over with a wash in a minute and just get rid of, you know, quite a few of those. I've got a fucking whatever that little shape there is. Looks rather random. Over here, we'll just, again, we'll just put some colours and some shade in around there. And that's kind of really how we do bulk rocks without having to do each, you know, each rock. 
Imagine trying to paint all these in, in one go. I mean, you'd go nuts if you had to try and paint all these. Let me just see if I can. Just uh, don't worry if you miss the odd one here and there. But there we go. There's some uh, there's some stones. Hopefully that looks uh, interprets well on the camera. Over here, looks like he could possibly have a little bit more of a shade to it. So I'm just going to come in here, just round that off a little. I don't want to lose any of that that uh, orange or I think it was um, raw sienna sort of that orangey sort of feel I like how it's sort of darkening and that's another point I like to really especially with a lot of my um, faces and let's just say other pieces I always like to do darker edges it forces the eye or the viewer to look at the main subject which hopefully will be this tree if I you know if I get it but this would look fantastic on a big wall. Let's say this was a um, 120 by G90 uh, or something like that, or, or 120 by 100 on the wall. That blue sky immediately just grabs your attention when you walk into a room, or if you're walking past a shop front, you just can't help but see it. And it just gra quickly just grabs your, the viewer's attention, which is what you want as an artist, I guess. All right, like I said, I wanted to be able to keep that. Um, so I'm going to put a little bit more burnt sienna in there. Just get a little bit of that burnt sienna and possibly a bit of that orange. And I might even put a bit of that yellow ochre down as well. We'll get a couple of these colours happening. Look at that orange. It's fantastic. What's that one? So that one is uh, my raw sienna. I was getting confused. They look a lot alike, don't they? So raw and yellow ochre. But I'll go the yellow ochre just to give it a little bit more of that lighter color and again as i always do far too much paint for what i'm doing here a bit heavy-handed i'm going to go a bit of that orange first i'm just going to see if i can get some highlights in here just see if i can bring that um that lighter color back in and again i'm going to get out of that go to my filbert just when they've been used for a bit they do get a little bit hard so it's always good to just loosen those tops off i might just come back out of score out of shot here a little bit um how do i do that if i go no how do i pinch down oh yeah there we go we're back right now um i'll put that over there right Let's see if i can bring a bit more of that orange through just in some highlights here. Nice. I know I'm painting on the tape here and it's just gonna be lifted off, but just uh, just so it does it does give it that random sort of bush scene. So it doesn't look like it's been orchestrated so much or, or worked out. And like I said, I want to go nice and dark in these, some of these corners here. And to the outer edge of my subject painting. By the looks of it, half of that salt bush there that we did the other night is going to be, last night, is going to be cut off. Anyhow, oh, yeah. I did say I wanted to bring a bit of that yellow ochre in, so I'm going to just see how that colour starts to look. Still don't want to bring too much colour to that background because it will bring it forward as opposed to pushing it back and wanting to make it look like it's out in the distance. So now, like I said, I'm still wondering how I'm going to do my tree because the scene's so small. I had an idea of this big wispy old, oh, what do they call them here? They're not a ghost gum, but they've got these really sort of wispy looking leaves coming off them. 
but now I've because it's so small I haven't really in my mind's eye I can't see how I can interpret this tree I was hoping to get I might see if I can find one of them little jiggly trees they're, they're kind of like limbs go all over the show they're so erratic but they look fantastic um, out in the scrub um, between here at Mildura and Broken Hill you see these little trees and they're just fantastic. I often want to pull up the car and just jump out and take a shot. I might do that actually. I've got to go back to Mildura. So on the way back, I might uh, see if I can find a little tree and see if we can't come back to this one tonight. But for now, like I said, it was mainly just to show you how I how I do this shadow around these, these stones. All right. I'm going away on holidays, so I'll see if I can get some shorts happening on some previous stuff. <coughs> While I'm away, because I don't know if I'll get time to do any more painting. But hopefully I get to get this painting done tonight. I'll see if I can find a little tree on the way home. No promises. But if I can, I'll try and sneak... Oh, the kids will grab me when I get home and they'll love me even just sitting there around but they don't like me painting <laughs> for some reason. No dad, I'm not allowed in your art studio. Why not? You kids are on your tablet. I should be able to let, I'll let them do some stuff too. But anyway, they don't see dad all, all week so I can see why they get excited even if I'm just sitting around with them. Okay, so I'll see if I can find a tree tonight, but hopefully that interprets onto the camera well enough for you to be able to see what I'm, how I've done that. So pretend that's around about there. Kind of just looks like some random rocks and stones, probably a little too many, but at the end of the day, I think it'll still look quite good. And um, we'll see if we can get back to this one tonight and I will, uh, hopefully have a little subject i'll pull up i'll pull up out the uh, out the bush somewhere on my, my drive home a three-hour drive home and see if i can find a little um one of them erratic little trees they're just fantastic i don't know the name of them i wish i did but they only stand about five to six foot high and they're just all over the show they just twist and they've got this little you know um they're just a fantastic tree to see so I'll see if I can do that tonight and see if I can get the, re uh, if I do get one, a reference photo of it. Okay, thanks for watching.